Well, welcome to the Aging Boomers. I'm your host, Frank Sampson. Of course, on our show, we discuss so many of the issues facing boomers, their parents, and what we know, of course, is an aging population. And I just want to thank everybody for all their support. Uh, so many of you have uh, gone to our website at agingboomers.com, iTunes, iHeartRadio. Also, as you know, or if you don't know, we have a free app on uh uh, on your iPhone, Android phone, uh, iPad, uh, just download the free app. It's called The Aging Boomers, and uh, you can get updated on all the shows, uh, all the interviews that we do with so many great people around the country. So, again, thanks for all your support. Also, uh, so many of you have ordered uh, my book, which is also called The Aging Boomers. It came out recently uh, on Kindle. It's coming out in paperback in a couple months, but it's a compilation of uh, many of the interviews that I did with people. So uh, thanks for all your support there as well. I want to remind everybody that today's show is sponsored by Senior Care Authority, a professional senior placement and elder care management organization that has a national network of advisors to help in determining the right path for senior living and receiving proper care. So whether it's in-home care, assisted living, residential or memory care, get the necessary advice from a senior care advisor in your area by calling Senior Care Authority at 888-809-1231, or you could go directly to the website at www.seniorcareauthority.com. And uh, very excited about uh, guests today, actually uh, local here in the Bay Area, but national uh, organization. Um, we have Sherwin uh, Sheik, is Sheik pronounce, am I pronouncing your last name correctly, Sherwin? I should have asked. Yes, yes. Yeah, no, okay, good. You, no. All right, so Sherwin <laughs> Sheik, who's the president and CEO of CareLink, C-A-R-E-L-I-N-X. Uh, after working uh, within the healthcare industry for over 15 years as a senior level executive at uh, Amgen and Merrill Lynch, Sherwin Sheik found himself the go-to person to solve many of the problems his family was encountering and caring for two of his family members. Out of this challenging time, Sherwin decided there had to be a better way, and he founded CareLinks in 2011 in San Francisco. CareLinks mission is to improve the accessibility and, afford and affordability of quality home care. So Sherwin, thanks so much for joining us on The Aging Boomers. We really appreciate it. So thank you, Frank. This is an honor. Yeah. So tell us more about, uh, I know I mentioned uh, you're caring for a couple of your family members. Give us a little more detail on that and how you got things started. Sure. Uh, can't take all the credit for taking care of my family members. Um, it's really uh, my mom and my aunt and seeing all their struggles. Obviously, I was right beside them trying to help them. But uh so again, yeah, I've been working within the healthcare industry for over 15 years. Um, and but what drove me to start the company is my sister has multiple sclerosis and progressed to the point where she became quadriplegic and blind. And my uncle, who was like my father figure growing up, my real dad passed when I was six, um, got Lou Gehrig's disease and uh, ALS and required 24-hour care seven days a week in the home. Um, in total, my family's been dealing with caregiving for about 20 years. And so when I saw what was happening professionally um, in the healthcare system um, with cutbacks in reimbursement for skilled nursing, better clinical outcomes, patients getting care in the home, 90% of seniors and boomers want to age in place. And then after seeing what my own family was struggling with, um, I realized there's a huge opportunity to kind of reimagine and revolutionize the in-home care delivery um, model in the United States. So, um, yeah, so uh, we're now, a, we have over 140,000 professional caregivers wow. across the United States, wow. ranging from certified nursing assistants, to medical assistants, licensed vocational nurses, and registered nurses. The two major pain points that I set out to solve um, when I built CareLinks um, is that many families just can't afford a traditional agency. 
um, the government does not cover in-home care support services until you're broke. And that's when Medicaid kicks in. And you have to have a liquid net worth of $2,000. And many families, such as my own, blew through, blow through their savings. They spend, on average, about $100,000 on in-home care support services completely out of pocket. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of them end up resorting, like my own family, to hiring privately, exposing themselves to a lot of risk. Uh, we had individuals steal from us, not show up for shifts. We didn't know all the regulatory requirements when hiring a professional caregiver, um, such as you began up becoming a domestic uh, employer. Um, and it was ended up becoming a, a very big deal for the family from the standpoint of um, my mom, who is a PhD molecular biologist, ultimately had to leave the workforce um, to take care of my sister. Um, who was quadriplegic and blind, and today she's still her primary caregiver. So my goal was to really improve the affordability of in-home care and then also provide uh, greater visibility into actually what's happening on a day-to-day basis. Um, So a lot of times family members live long distance from their loved one's needing care. Like my mom was up here in the San Francisco Bay Area. My sister was down in Los Angeles and we had no idea what the agency workers were doing. Um, And um, it just made my mom constantly having to travel to check in on her and making sure that the house was being upkept, which then ultimately kind of forced her in this early retirement. So the way what I ended up doing was creating this new novel approach to delivering in-home care support services, uh, which is a marketplace. And we help families easily find caregivers who match their specific needs and budget on multiple dimensions of compatibility um, and via our algorithms. But we also had a, a dedicated advisor that every family gets assigned that helps them navigate the process until they find the right provider but then we give them the tools to manage all that care via web and mobile solutions. And so what we've been able to see is that the families are saving on average about 30% um, relative to traditional agencies and even up to about 50%, close to about two to $3,000 per month. But as important is the professional workers themselves. At agencies, they're getting paid near minimum wage versus – at CareLinks, um, they're getting uh, close to 25 to 30% higher wages. And so we have a worker who, a uh, professional caregiver who's now in the home earning significantly higher wages and is at a good match for the care recipient. Um, and so that's what we're doing at CareLinks. That's great. Uh, you know, I want to get into some specifics and having our listeners understand some of the differences and why they would be saving. But help our uh, help us understand the the main difference between what we call in the industry non medical versus medical home care. Why don't you and and where does CareLinks fit into that? Help, help our listeners understand that, and then we'll get into some more specifics. Sorry, can you repeat the, just the question one last time? Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, now, you it, know, uh, understanding the difference between, you know, the two different types of home care, non-medical versus medical. So, you know, uh, medical home care being more with nurses and, you know, so yep. there's that. So maybe explain that difference where CareLinks falls into that category, you know, one of those categories. And then we'll talk about some more specifics on, on your service. Sure. So, yeah, so uh, you're absolutely right. So the two types of categories, um, as you you described, is what's called non-medical in-home care, which is uh, what we provide, um, and then there's home health care. So on the non-medical side is we support seniors and patients with chronic conditions with uh, what are called ADLs, activities of daily living. That includes medication reminders, if they have mobility issues with basically helping with transferring and mobility assistance, bathing, grooming, um, meal preparation, um, transportation, um, light housekeeping, errands, 
Um, and then most importantly, also just general companionship. Um, and what we've been able to observe is that uh, real good health outcomes occur when the provider is actually a great personal compatibility match with the patient. And they're actually kind of, we have a mantra here, that they become part of the family. And uh, again, a lot of times family members are living long distance or having to hold down a full-time job. And so in, instead of having their loved one move into a, a facility um, that they're not quite ready yet, um, then what they do, what we do is we help them find a professional caregiver who help, can help them just easily and safely stay and age um, at home as long as possible. And on the home health side, this is where you're providing skilled medical care in the home. So things we can't do are like G-tubes, pick lines, um, med administration, such as providing insulin shots. If it's an ALS patient, we're progressing to the point where they have a trach. Um, they can't uh, administer the trach and or wound care. So if there is a skilled medical care that needed to be done, which is typically also reimbursable by Medicare, um, that is provided through uh, what are called home health agencies. So think of non-medical as um, how to keep your loved one safely um, age at home and basically have a companion with them um, to get them out and socialize and not be isolated and basically help them with all their activities of daily living versus the skilled medical piece. Okay. So go over, um, so if somebody were to go to your website or call you, I mean, what what are the steps? Try to explain the steps that a family member would, would take take us through the process if they're looking for a caregiver. Yeah. Yeah, yeah great question. So, yeah, so what they do is they come to our site. They can either call in, and then they would be basically talking to a care advisor and or they can go through our intake form. And our intake form basically helps us understand the needs um, for themselves or their loved one needing care. Um, and it asks questions on types of activities of daily living that they need assistance, bathing, grooming, dressing, um, hygiene, um, um, and med reminders, transportation, um, general housekeeping. Are there any conditions such as like uh, early stage dementia, Alzheimer's, COPD, MS, Parkinson's, um, just someone needs general companion care. All these kind of, as it goes through our intake assessment, is feeding our algorithm that helps us find um, the best possible match, even based on gender preferences, language preference, cultural backgrounds. Um, because again, we realize that the best outcomes occur when the, the provider is really like a family member. Um, and so once that intake assessment is done, it feeds our algorithm where we now have over 140,000 providers in our network. And our goal is to find the right match for each one of our clients. And so then that client, once they submit the intake form, is assigned a dedicated advisor at CareLinks who is with them throughout their entire journey. And from the point of helping them schedule interviews um, to finding the right provider, um, given the results that we've found, um, to even ongoing once they have hired the caregiver, we continuously check in multiple times a month just to see how things are doing. And these check-ins are the advisor calling in on the family, the advisor also calling in on the provider to make sure that everything's okay in the home. But we also enable the family, the patient, and the caregiver to easily collaborate through mobile uh, and, and our web technology. So the family then can easily see when the caregivers arrived, all the activities of daily, uh, uh, daily living that the caregiver has done that day. So we have what's called a digital care plan 
um, depending on the condition of the loved one, that basically tell the caregiver exactly what they should be doing on a day-to-day basis. And then we ask the caregivers to upload imagery um, on completion of tasks where the families can review um, and then score the caregivers. Um, we also uh, rank and rate the caregivers uh, based on their adherence to that care plan directive that um, that is provided to them. And so they're really incentivized to make sure that they're they're providing medication on time, they're, they're taking the, their, their loved one to the doctor's appointment on time, and family can request even just socialization activities. Please take them to um, the senior center and or to the park today and take a couple pictures, upload them up, and then the family can easily see where the caregiver was that day while they're with their loved one and exactly what happened that day. Um, and then at the end of the week, um, the caregiver submits their timesheet, and then the family has a complete, comprehensive view of everything that was done that week. Also, with all the imagery that that was taken, um, they can see uh, all the notes the caregiver took. Um, we track things such as vitals and, and weight, and so they can see the progression of how uh, their loved one is, um, no matter where they're living. And um, then we handle all the payment and payroll processing. So the caregivers are W-2. Um, the family just pushes, I approve this invoice. And then depending on their payment method, via a credit, debit card, and or an ACH bank-to-bank transfer, we transfer the funds directly into the caregiver's checking account. We also bond and, uh, and insure these caregivers with $4 million of coverage. Mm-hmm. So God forbid an accident happens, the family has a comfort and safety of knowing that these professionals have been fully vetted. Um, we run comprehensive background checks, seven-year look back, um, and then we're obviously constantly uh, testing these par- caregivers for competency. Um, and then we um, cover them with that $4 million in, in, in liability insurance. And then we handle all the payroll processing and then tax filing and tax remittance. And the, get, the caregiver gets a W-2 at the end of the year. So really what we're doing is taking what the traditional agency was doing, um, but they mark up the cost of care between 75 and 150% while paying the caregivers close to minimum wage. We've taken all of that administrative function and task and integrated it within our platform and then enabled the family with a professional advisor to find the right caregiver to cut out all this overhead of running a traditional brick-and-mortar franchise operation. And so as a result, the families are saving and the caregivers are earning higher wages. Yeah, so help... um maybe help us understand, you know, if, if somebody came to me and said, you're going to kind of get the same thing from us, and meaning you, at 30 to 50% less than you would pay elsewhere, uh, somebody might go, whoa, what's missing here? Or, am I really sure. getting that service? So help us understand then uh, what you would tell a family, uh, w- why it is less. All right. You're, you're sure. paying you're paying your caregivers more. Yes. Yet it's still 30 to 50 percent less. So help us understand that. Yes. Yeah, so the way that the industry is structured right now, um, it's in it's a very massive industry. It's in, in, in one of my frustrations of why I started this was I had a lot. We had a lot of caregivers that we fell in love with and we ended up and they end up having to leave. So the average turnover rate for traditional agencies is about 75%. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that they're getting paid near minimum wage while the agency owners are meet, uh, taking majority of the profit. Um, but there's also a lot of structural overhead costs that these traditional agency operators, especially the franchise operators, um, Names that you're probably very familiar with, like right. Home Instead, Visiting Angels, Comfort Care, Right at Home. A lot of their franchise 
owners or individual owners and operators where they have to pay a royalty back to the franchise. Mm -hmm. Um, But they also are then operating a physical brick-and-mortar retail operation where they have rent in every location that they are operating. They have front-end administrative staff. They are doing all the bookkeeping themselves, and it's a lot of redundancy across the entire franchise um, where they're having to have all this overhead costs. Uh, The difference between... um, and secondarily is that the families, um, I mean, the, the agencies are directly employing these caregivers. Um, and so they're on their, their books. Um, and, and, and so when a family comes into them, they really just look at who has availability in their schedule and, then sends out that person who has availability in the schedule rather than who's a compatible match. And so when I saw the, how much churn we were seeing when we were working with agencies and how expensive it was just because the structural overhead cost was, I decided we had to completely reimagine the way that care delivery is done. And so that's how I came up with the, the, the new what we call the marketplace model, where the caregivers themselves um, are able to see what fair labor wages are. So if they're a CNA with five years of experience or even an RN who's retired from a hospital with 20 years of experience, they can see what their wage that they can charge if um, they're in Los Angeles or in Washington, D.C., and they're able to set their own rate. And what we do is then based when the family comes in and it puts the intake um, assessment, we we match the family with the right caregiver given their budget um, constraints, given their preferences on gender, language, and all there's multiple dimensions and attributes which we match upon. But then what we do is we set the family up as the individual employer, domestic employer, Mm -hmm. um, rather than the agents basically having, we don't have 140,000 caregivers on our payroll. What we do is we set each family up as the individual employer. Mm -hmm. Um, And as a result, there's a lot of savings that go with that, and the families get tax breaks um, because for medical tax deductions for paying for these types of services. So we seamlessly set the family up with an EIN. We then manage all the payroll taxes, tax filing, tax remittance on behalf of the family. We issue a W-2 to the caregiver, um, and we're a tech-enabled business where we have a basically entire team in the Midwest that is helping families, thousands of over a thousand families a month now, coming to us across the country, where we help them navigate this entire process. But we're doing it via our technology platform, and versus having a physical retail brick and mortar presence, mm-hmm. and then our ability to basically set the family up as an employer of record, and then in compliance with all federal and state employment laws, manage. Um, all the payroll taxes and whatnot is exactly how we're able to drive down the cost and help the caregivers earn higher wages. And um, so structurally, our model is, is allowing us to cut out a lot of this administrative overhead that the traditional agencies have while still being able to provide the same level of service with our dedicated advisors um, that are continuously checking in with the family, and then also our technology solution that gives visibility to the families exactly what the caregivers are doing on a day-to-day basis, which majority of the agencies don't have that technology solution um, where they can't provide that visibility in real time, where, whereas we do. Gotcha. So I, I took a peek at your website and just put in my area where I'm at, and some caregivers came up, and it showed an hourly rate. So would that hourly rate also encompass the work that you're doing on behalf of the family, or is that an additional fee? So, yeah, when you click into the caregiver profile, 
you will we are very transparent on the pricing. We show exactly what the caregiver wants to make, and then we show the all-inclusive care links fee plus the employer taxes lumped in because we process everything on behalf of the family. Okay. So we charge a 15% um, uh, flat fee on top of the caregiver's wage uh, that, we, that basically covers all the costs of care links. Yeah, um, I, I, I would think, uh, yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yep. I, I just, I didn't want to forget to ask because I know that uh, certainly, you know, I'm in the industry and I know a lot of, you know, agencies, traditional agencies, and it's always a challenge for them that they could lose a caregiver to their own family account, all right, because they end up maybe hiring them directly. It seems like you've eliminated that. Uh, why would that happen? <laughs> because they're they're paying the regular fee to that caregiver, and they would have to take care of uh, that payroll processing anyway. So am I looking at it right? You're absolutely looking at it right. So when you look at the industry averages for traditional agencies, their duration of cl of client is about nine months, whereas people on average need in-home care support services for about two and a half years. And a lot of times, families are are don't plan for needing in-home care support services for a loved one until, unfortunately, some acute event happens which then force them to scramble to find resources. And right now the current paradigm is these agencies have been out there. They have the relationships with the discharge planners at the hospitals or skilled nursing facilities. And the families just scramble and, and just hire one of their local agencies. But then what the family quickly realizes is they're spending about 4000 to sometimes up to 5000 In our case, we blew through about $80,000 in six months given how much care that was needed. And many families resort to hiring privately, as I mentioned at the beginning of our call, and then they expose themselves to a lot of risk. They don't know how to properly run a background check on the caregiver. Right. They don't know about all the tax filings and basically the employment responsibilities that come with directly employing a, a, a private caregiver, and they expose themselves to risk that caregiver claiming unemployment against them, and again, lastly, the insurance. So God forbid an accident happens, um, what happens to your family? And so, yeah, on our site, we see very limited um, leakage is what we call off-platform transactions because we just, if everything's transparent. We just show exactly how much we charge. And given that our, we are charging 15% for managing all this on behalf of the family, including the payroll, the tax filing, tax administration, the dedicated customer service, and then also the technology that gives them visibility and insurance that, that they're paying exactly what they should be paying because we're tracking the workers while they're on their shift, gives a lot of families comfort of, of knowing uh, and not wanting to cut caroling out. Secondarily is these professional caregivers we don't take a single cent from their pay. They indicate exactly how much they want to get paid. We help them see what fair market labor wages are. And so they set their own rates. And again, we don't take anything from their pay, but we also protect them with, with professional liability insurance um, whenever they work through our platform. And uh, our goal is to continuously provide them with high paying jobs where they're a compatible match for. We don't just tell them, hey, this is your next assignment, be there on Monday morning. What we do is we match them with a client based on the caregiver's attributes and the care recipient's needs and attributes. And so what we're seeing is a better overall match. And consequently, the industry average turnover for, again, home care is about 75% versus care links. It's, it's less than 10% turnover because of these dynamics, family saving, caregivers earning more, and there being a better match between the two, and the families and caregivers being able to easily collaborate via our, our mobile solution. Well, sure. When I, and I, I could talk to you all day about this subject, and I have 
a ton more questions I love to ask, but unfortunately we're out of time. But we'd love to have you back in the future. I hope you'll come back, and we get there's so much to talk about. I know licensing is taking place in California and other states, so you know there's a lot to talk about. So I'd love to have you back in the future. But before we uh, sign off here, why don't you just share with people how uh, someone can get a hold of you, your website, anything you'd like to share? Go ahead. Yeah, you, um, you can easily just go to our website at www.carelinks, C-A-R-E-L-I-N-X, like X-ray at the end, dot com. Um, and or you can call us at 1-800-494-3106. And, um, uh, but the best way is to just to go online uh, learn a little bit more uh, about uh, care links and one of our advisors would be more than happy uh, to help you and your family and again it's completely free we don't charge you anything until we help you find that right provider um, we even will schedule the interviews and have the caregivers come out um, and there's no cost to you or your family until you find someone that you want to engage with great sure when Sheik, thank you so much from CareLinks, um, and thank you all for, for joining us on the Aging Boomers. Be safe out there, and we'll talk to you all soon. Okay, great. Sorry I had to push you at the end there. We were kind of uh, a little... No, sorry, I could talk for